Hello and welcome to this talk Wednesday the 12th of June. Now yesterday we looked at the risks posed by the uh, speed, some might say the excessive speed of the development of mRNA vaccinations for a whole range of conditions. We have the COVID vaccines of course, the FDA has approved the respiratory syncytial virus mRNA genetic sequence vaccine whatever you want to call it. Uh, influenza uh, mRNA vaccine is now in phase three clinical trials and Joseph, Dr Joseph Freeman who we've interviewed on this channel before has issued a statement about it which I, I want to look at he's clearly chosen his words very carefully and there really is significant concern in my mind and I, I think you'll see in his mind about the mRNA vaccine program uh, now Dr Freeman had written uh, the lead author in this paper that we looked at in some detail Secondary Analysis of Adverse Events in Phase 3 Trials of Pfizer and Moderna uh, Vaccines. And they found out that the combined effect was there was a 16% higher risk of serious adverse events in the mRNA vaccine recipients. And uh, you might remember it turns out to be about 1 in 800 recipients had a serious adverse reaction. These uh, levels of adverse reaction are, in my view, outrageously high and the vaccine should never have been passed. But of course, these are only the acute effects because the trials didn't run for very long. It's not telling us about the longer term effects, just the acute effects. Anyway, over to Dr. Freeman now. Uh, listen to him carefully and then we'll come back and make a comment. Hello, my name is Dr. Joseph Freeman. I'm an emergency physician based in Louisiana. In addition, I am a clinical scientist. I was the lead author of a peer-reviewed study that reanalyzed the original Pfizer and Moderna clinical trials for the messenger RNA COVID-19 vaccines. We found the vaccine increased serious adverse events at a rate of 1 in 800. At the time of publication, my co-authors and I did not believe our single study warranted the withdrawal of the messenger RNA vaccines from the market. However, since its publication, Multiple new pieces of evidence have come to light, and this has caused me to reevaluate my position. An article published in the BMJ regarding the FDA's own observational surveillance data found the messenger RNAs were associated with multiple of the exact same serious adverse events identified in our original study. But the FDA had failed to inform the public of these findings. In addition, now we have multiple autopsy studies that find essentially conclusive evidence that the vaccines are inducing sudden cardiac deaths, yet the rate of these vaccine-induced deaths remains unknown. While many nations that have been using the messenger RNA vaccines have experienced an increase in excess mortality, more people dying than should be expected from past years. And this correlates in time with the initial vaccine rollout and then with the subsequent booster campaigns. Nations with higher messenger RNA vaccine uptake have correlations with higher rates of excess mortality. While the cause of this excess mortality is not known, researchers analyzing this data were unable to identify any other reasonable cause of the excess death other than the vaccines. Given now that Omicron variant is less virulent and is able to evade much of the protection offered by the vaccines, this creates a situation where the benefits of the vaccine have been dramatically reduced in, for hospitalization and, and death. Together, this information calls into question if the vaccine's benefits are outweighing the harm. I believe, given the information, the messenger RNA vaccines need to be withdrawn from the market until new randomized controlled trials can clearly demonstrate the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the serious harm we now know the vaccines are causing. Well, carefully chosen words, I think you'll agree from Dr. Freeman. Increasing serious adverse events. New evidence has come to light. Multiple adverse events confirmed. Things that were seen in his, his original study from the phase three trials have been confirmed by multiple observations. And the FDA did not inform the public. If the FDA did not inform the public, how on earth can citizens make informed consent, give informed consent? I think the answer is they can't because they weren't given the, the information. 
information withheld by the FDA. Autopsy studies, post-mortem studies, essentially conclusive evidence vaccines are inducing sudden cardiac deaths, but we don't know how many. Because, of course, sudden cardiac death can happen. And sometimes this could just be diagnosed as sudden cardiac death without looking at the possibility of the uh, histochemical presence of the spike protein in the myocardial tissue. This needs to be done. It's happening. He's sure it's happening. Just not sure of the numbers. We suspect it's uh, a significant number. Excess mortality is correlated with uh, vaccine rollouts and booster programs in different countries. And he also says that, that there's a lack of other reasonable causes. So he's putting together quite a conclusive case. I would actually probably uh, add a few bits to it. I would say that the, uh, the strength of the relationship is improved by the many coincidences. How many coincidences do we have to have? before we start talking about causality. I will talk about the consistency between countries. We're getting the same increased deaths in the United States, in Canada, in Australia, in the United Kingdom, around the Western world countries. There's consistency between countries and people groups. And there's a biological gradient. So countries with a lot of vaccines get more adverse reactions. Countries with less vaccines, such as African countries, it, there doesn't appear to be any, or minimal amounts. I would also add that there's plausible mechanisms of harm. We looked at this yesterday, the systemic distribution of the lipid nanoparticles. The uh, lipid nanoparticles integrating the ribonucleic acid into the cells. The cells expressing the antigen on their surfaces and the cytotoxic T cells coming along and destroying those cells, causing uh, inflammation, potentially in any part of the body i think yesterday we mentioned i can't remember little organs like the brain the heart ovaries testes things like that there's also lab work which is consistent with these plausible mechanisms and there's also a lot of coherence between laboratory investigations and epidemiological studies from the limited amount of pathological work which has been carried on um, Dr. Freeman uh, talks about uh, Omicron being less dangerous, therefore the risk-benefit analysis has changed. We're sort of ploughing on as if we're in a crisis. Well, right now we're not, but we're carrying on as if we were, to a large extent. This, uh, this needs to change. Times have changed. COVID is less dangerous now. And he says mRNA vaccines should be withdrawn. Now, interestingly, Dr. Freeman here doesn't say um, all mRNA vaccines, but the only ones that are actually being used at the moment are the uh, COVID ones. The respiratory syncytial virus vaccine is not due to be rolled out, at least in the United States, until um, the end of 24, the 24-25 the uh, influenza season. So we've got a bit of time on that. And we'll have to check with Dr. Freeman whether he wants all mRNA vaccines withdrawn. Uh, or, or just the COVID ones. I suspect it's them all, but I don't want to put words in his mouth. I would certainly say uh, they should all be suspended until we've got huge amounts of new evidence, including longitudinal evidence and conven con convincing evidence that reverse transcription doesn't happen to, to indicate that these RNA vaccines are not changing the, the DNA in cells. These things take longer time. Until that is established, I feel there should be a monitorium at least. And um, Dr. Framer says, we now know that these vaccines are causing serious harm. So time for some humility, time for a pause, time to analyse the um, longer term adverse reactions, time to examine the uh, post vaccine syndromes like we've interviewed so many people on this channel about, get some firm answers before we plough on with this programme. I don't think it's going to happen. I think governments around the world are committed to Massive rollout of mRNA vaccines. In the UK, we've struck a deal with Moderna. New Moderna factories in Canada. New Moderna factories in Oxford in the UK. New Moderna factories in Australia. And at different parts of the world. Governments and vested interests seem determined to plough ahead with this. And uh, the siren voices of dissent. 
Dr. Freeman, me, many others, of course, um, that we've interviewed on this channel again. Uh, I wouldn't even say we're being poo-pooed, just ignored. The programme is going ahead, and uh, I predict, unfortunately, that there will be adverse reactions from all of these new mRNA vaccines and from the ongoing COVID vaccines. Um, let's hope the numbers are small, but I fear they won't be. We'll try and get Dr. Freeman on again, actually. He's, uh, he's always, up for a, always up for a talk and very, very informative and a very good clinical scientist and consistent with so many other concerned voices around the world, but alas, falling on deaf ears. He also said, I mean, just in the original trial, Dr. Freeman uh, talked about the, um, the fact that we need the, um, the uh, more data, the participant level data. Where are we? There we are. Um, yeah. Um, so th these analyses that he wants, these new analyses that he wants, um, will require the public release of participant level data sets. As far as I know, never happened. The pharmaceutical people that ran the, ran the trials have this data, but um, independent analysis is, uh, aren't allowed it. We need more transparency as well. Anyway, we could go on, uh, but um, carefully chosen words from Dr. Freeman. Uh, I feel the world would do well to heed them. Thank you for watching.